Last year, I made a video looking at a prototype of an upcoming graphing calculator model from a company called Zero Calculators. Zero has been working on a graphing calculator which attempts to directly compete with TI's 84 Plus line by designing a system similar enough to the feel of TI's calculators to work well with pre-existing teaching resources for them. With companies like Casio, HP, or Numworks, an unfamiliar interface can be a major hurdle for the education market despite them having objectively better specifications or features. Zero has kindly sent me their latest prototype, the ZGC4, and in today's video we'll take a look at what's changed since the ZGC3 model I looked at on the channel last time. Zero left me hoping for a few significant improvements with the ZGC3, so I'm excited to see what they've done for this new model. Like the ZGC3, Zero's included a USB Type-C cable for charging and file transfer along with the calculator, though they didn't send me any fancy packaging or info cards like the last one. As a prototype, I'm not too surprised, but my guess is that the final product will use a pretty similar packaging design to the ZGC3. The calculator's dimensions appear to be identical to its predecessor, being just slightly smaller than a TID4 Plus CE. On the back of the calculator, you'll notice that the design has changed slightly, with the shiny information plaque about half the size of the previous. We've also got a link to the company's website here, which is back up again, but appears to be incomplete at the time I'm recording this video. After removing the slide cover, we're met with one of the most obvious changes. The problematic reflective finish of the ZGC3 has been swapped out for a much more fingerprint-resistant matte black, which also makes the text above the buttons much more legible. The arrow keys have been moved from the center to the left side of the keypad, which I found a lot more comfortable and easy to use. As pointed out by some staff from TI Planet, the left aligned arrow key layout does take some getting used to coming from TI's upper keypad layout, though I personally didn't find it that off-putting. It's also unlikely to be a problem for new students who don't already have that TI muscle memory. Taking a look at the buttons themselves, you'll notice that Zero has opted for a slightly concave design this time around after receiving some complaints about the ergonomics of the old buttons during extended use. The feel of the buttons, at least to me, is a massive improvement from the ZGC3, where I found that the keys could kind of get a little uncomfortable after using it for a while. The font on a number of buttons has also been enlarged and boldened, which definitely makes them easier to read. My only complaint is this light-colored text on the second button, which I find a bit difficult to make out, especially at different viewing angles. I think this could be improved by something as simple as a slight outline and would be definitely nice to see in the final model. When trying out the software, the first thing I noticed is that the calculator still takes a second when turning on and off. I'm not sure exactly what the system is doing here, but it's definitely noticeable, and I thought it was worth mentioning. My experience with the calculator has been pretty smooth for the most part, with most math and graphing related things performing significantly faster than the TI-84 Plus CE. However, there have been a few scenarios which other beta testers noticed where the Zero has struggled to keep up, including the disp command in Zero's basic language. Zero has been pretty reliable with fixing bugs in the past, so I'm hoping they'll be able to address some of these slowdowns as well. With first impressions out of the way, let's open this thing up and take a look inside. Like the previous model, the back is secured with four 1.5mm hex screws along with some plastic clips which can be pried open with not too much difficulty. The internals look basically the same as the previous model with the battery glued to the back portion of the calculator in an almost identical PCB. The tiny and easy to lose reset button is also still here, though thankfully I managed to survive another teardown without losing it. I don't really know that much about hardware, but the big stuff I understand is all still the same with the same microcontroller, RAM, and flash chips. Thanks to the ARM chip and the flash and RAM, Zero is able to maintain an edge above TI's EZ80 series, though the HP fans will always be ready in my comment section to remind you that there are still more powerful alternatives if you're willing to step away from a TI-like system. I also spent a little bit of time messing around with the debug interfaces on the board, and while I'm not super into hardware, I usually prefer to stick to software where mistakes are much more forgiving, I did confirm from the UART serial console that the clock is running around 240MHz, which is faster than the ZGC3 and fully takes advantage of the capabilities of the microcontroller on the board, so good job to Zero on that one. The board can be removed from the front cover with four more 1.5mm hex screws, revealing the keypad which seems to have received one more less noticeable change from the ZGC3. Back in September, I remember being surprised that the buttons on the ZGC3 were fused to the rubber keypad, but Zero has gone back on this for the ZGC4 which means a few more things to worry about losing when taking the calculator apart. I'm not sure whether this affects the feel of the buttons, but I suppose it could have helped to ease a little bit of the stiffness and make them easier to press. All in all, I'm happy to see Zero making what I'd consider to be positive improvements to the device, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do as another potential back-to-school release is slowly creeping up on the horizon. 
I've learned my lesson about making predictions, but I do think it's pretty safe to say that the calculator is getting close to a finalized model, and I'm excited to see it hit the shelves, hopefully sooner rather than later. If you're curious to learn more about Xero, I'll link some other good resources and articles about the ZGC4 in the description, and I'd encourage you to check out my or The Last Millennial's video on the ZGC3 as well if you haven't already. Be sure to let me know what you think about Xero's latest model in the comments as well, and as always, this has been Tiny Hacker, and I'll see you in the next video.